What's going on, fellas? I've got a 2010 Mazda 3 here, and I'm using this car to point out to you the location of the two starter fuses and the one starter relay, and I'll also give you some troubleshooting steps. So to start with, we're gonna pry this cover open here. Behind it, you'll find what's called the starter signal fuse. It's this 10 amp fuse right here, and this fuse it sends power to the starter relay whenever the key is turned to the start position. So what's cool about it, you see the exposed metal on that fuse. You can put a voltmeter there and you should read 12 volts at that fuse whenever this key is turned all the way to start. If you do not see voltage there when the key is turned all the way, then you may have a bad ignition switch. But before you condemn the ignition switch, you need to check the other starter fuse and relay. So under the hood, we're gonna see a cover here which we remove by pushing in on this tab here and lifting up. There's a 40 amp J case fuse called the ignition key two fuse and that's this one right here. The cover is broken off on this fuse but this is the fuse that sends power to the ignition switch that is used for triggering the relay. This also sends power to the starter relay itself. Now the starter relay is this relay right here. My favorite way to troubleshoot this is I'll have someone hold the key to the start position and I'll tap the relay. I'll also grab the relay and wiggle it. Sometimes relays can get stuck and tapping the relay or wiggling the relay can get it unstuck. Beyond that, what I'll do is I'll gently remove the relay and I'll swap in another relay. So here I can take the horn relay and I can put that in place of the starter relay. If after I swap the relay, the car is able to start, well, then I know that the relay is probably the issue. Further troubleshooting, one thing you might do is you can take a wire, and if you connect these two pins together, you will be sending power directly to the starter from your 40 amp JK fuse there. So if you connect these two pins together, the engine will turn over, assuming that the starter is in good condition, that the battery is good, that the wiring is good and that the engine is not seized. So that is just a troubleshooting step. Do not do that if anyone's hands are in the engine compartment or if the car is not in park. So yeah, I hope that this information was helpful for you. Please do let me know if you have any questions or more importantly, if you have any advice for troubleshooting the starter on your Mazda 3.